Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been loading you up with these new ARM Windows PCs this week, and I've got another one to check out today. This is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X, and like the HP that we looked at last week, this also has the Snapdragon X Elite processor and all of the benefits and challenges that that chip comes with. And we're going to get into what this laptop is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Lenovo provided this laptop on loan to the channel for this review. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $1,200. And there's also a ThinkPad version of this that costs a little more, but should perform about the same. Now, before we get too much further, I did want to describe the differences between the processor in this machine versus what you might see on other comparably priced laptops that have an Intel or an AMD processor. Those are based on the x64 architecture. Most software is written for those Intel and AMD machines. Over here, you can run a lot of that software but it has to basically translate it into the language that this processor understands. It's a very different architecture than what Windows typically runs on. Now, Windows has supported ARM processors for a number of years now, but you've paid the price in both performance and compatibility. These new Snapdragon chips have closed the performance level quite a bit, so they do perform now at the same level other $1,200 laptops perform at, but the compatibility issues are still out there. And although a lot of stuff runs better than it used to, if you've got a lot of different applications that you need to run on your Windows computer, they may or may not run. And it's odd that it's just a hit or miss kind of thing. It's hard to get a comprehensive list anywhere of what's going to work versus what isn't going to work. So what we're gonna focus on today are mostly the things that do work, but I'll also show you some examples of what happens when things don't. And that's really important to think about when you are choosing one of these laptops. The benefit, though, is the battery life is substantially better than one of those Intel or AMD-based devices, partly because they have an enormous battery inside of this thing. It's running at 70 watt-hours, which is actually pretty close to what Apple puts in their MacBook Pros. So in my testing, the battery life on this is every bit as good as what I get on my ARM-based MacBooks, both my MacBook Air and my MacBook Pro. And if you're after battery life and your applications are compatible, I think you'll be very happy with this, but if you run a lot of different stuff or want to play games every once in a while, it's a very different story, as you'll see a little bit later in the video. Now, as mentioned, this machine has the Snapdragon X Elite processor on board. It's even got the sticker to prove it. Additionally, you get 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. The RAM is not upgradable, but the storage is. This one came with a 512 gigabyte M2 SSD that you could go in later and replace if you want. What I really like about this device, though, is its beautiful OLED display. This is a 14.5-inch 3K display. That is a 2944 by 1840 resolution. It supports Dolby Vision, and it has a peak brightness of 1,000 nits, and its day-to-day -day brightness is 500 nits, which is pretty bright, I think, for a laptop at this price point. So it looks great. You've got that awesome contrast ratio where the blacks are a deep black here and you've got very nice color. It supports 100% of the DCI P3 color space, so it's good for creative work as well. And it runs at 90 hertz, which means that it can refresh the screen a little quicker than the typical 60 hertz display out there. So it's going to feel a little snappier and responsive. And typically, uh, this kind of display works really well in the gaming space, but of course these ARM-based machines don't play games all that well, so it'll just make your spreadsheets and some of the other things you're doing on it feel a lot quicker. But all in, it's a very nicely constructed laptop here. It is all aluminum. It's not all that heavy. It comes in at 2.82 pounds or 1.28 kilograms. I also like the fact that the display can be lifted up with a single hand here, so it's got that nice premium feel to it. Uh, so all in, uh, this one so far is my favorite uh, feeling laptops running with these new ARM processors. Like other Lenovo devices, it's got a great keyboard. It's pretty much the same layout as other Lenovo's that we've looked at. A decent uh, key travel here. In other words, the keys push down nice and far, so you've got a good feel when you're typing on it. Large keys that are well-spaced. They are backlit as well. 
So checks all the boxes there. The trackpad is also very nice. As you can see, it's very large here. It's very accurate. I had uh, pretty uh, good experiences using it. What I did do, though, like I did on the HP I looked at last week, is I turned off tap to click, which made it work a little better for me. So all in, I think it is a very nicely constructed laptop that has a very nice display. And if your applications are supported, decent performance as well. As far as ports are concerned, you do have a number of them on here. Uh, this has not one, but three USB 4.0 ports that run at 40 gigabits per second each. You've got two on this side and one on the other here. And these are all full service ports that can do display output along with power in and of course support 40 gigabit USB 4 devices and backwards. Now USB 4 is compatible with Thunderbolt devices like this hard drive here. And on the HP that we tested last week, once I started writing data to this drive, it would basically eject it midstream. That did not happen with this computer. So when I popped it in and ran a speed test, everything worked fairly well, although the performance was running slightly lower than this drive typically runs at. So this drive can achieve read and write speeds above two gigabytes per second on a Thunderbolt computer. And here it was a little under that, but it was still working reliably which it wasn't doing on the other ARM computer from HP we looked at last week. So whatever drivers they've got here are perhaps running a little better on the Lenovo hardware. Now, some of you asked about connecting external GPUs to this. I have tried that, and the machine will recognize that it's got some kind of display adapter attached, but unfortunately there are no drivers for the video cards that run on the ARM hardware yet. So presumably it would be possible in the future to connect external graphics to these things, but right now it is not working. Uh, so maybe sometime later it will, and we will test that when it is uh, something we can play with. Now this does have a 1080p webcam here at the top. There is a switch on the side here to turn the camera off, as you can see there. It does not block the lens though. The image quality out of it is okay. It's not as nice though as the HP webcam that we saw last week. That webcam had a little higher resolution, but it's still adequate for doing web conference calls and that sort of thing. You've got nice speakers on here. They are good for conference calls and spoken word stuff. Music is a little flat to me, so you may want to attach some headphones. Uh, there is a headphone jack here on this side of the laptop, or of course use Bluetooth headphones. But otherwise, the audio was adequate for getting work done. This is a touch display. It does not though go all the way down to your desk, so I don't think you'll be using a pen with this. And of course, this is not one of those tablet-based two-in-ones. But overall, I do like the lightweight uh, nature of the laptop here. It's all metal, aluminum in its design, and it seems to uh, conduct itself quite well. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. Now, the good news is that if you live mostly inside a web browser or Microsoft Office applications, everything here will work fine and will be much faster than what we saw on previous ARM-based Windows laptops. Things really have improved quite a bit uh, for applications that are compatible. So you can see Microsoft Word here just sprung to life very quickly. It all feels pretty good here. And if you were uh, upgrading from some Intel or AMD-based device that you've been using for a couple of years, this will feel pretty good and about the same insofar as how it feels from a qualitative perspective. If we jump out of here and load up the Brave web browser, this browser is optimized for the ARM processor. And of course, you will see much better performance out of applications that have been optimized in that way. And as you can see here, it is super fast and responsive. Every bit as good as what you would see on a current Intel or AMD device that is priced at around the price point of this one. And of course, that 90 hertz display really helps too. I have this connected to my Wi-Fi 6 network. This does support actually Wi-Fi 7. So whatever modern wireless technology you've got going on, this should work just fine. But overall, for the basics, it performs quite well. I also ran my YouTube video that I like to test on here, which is a 60 frames per second video. It ran perfectly with no drop frames. So media playback should be fine on here as well. And this is one of the areas that uh, this chip is optimized for, which is video playback. And the scores that I got on the browserbench.org speedometer test back up what I was feeling here. We got a score of 23.9, which is very close to what we saw out of the HP with the Snapdragon we looked at last week. 
but it's also within the margin of error of the current crop of Intel Core Ultra processors that you will also find on laptops very similarly priced to this one. So if you are working in the web browser throughout the day or you are doing Word and some of the other types of office related tasks, you will get great performance out of here along with that better battery life. And if you keep the display brightness down, I think you can get 18 hours out of this thing, if not a little bit more. But the OLED display here does consume a lot more power than some of the IPS LED displays that we often see out there. However, Lenovo did put a bigger battery in this machine to compensate a little bit. Either way, the battery life on here in my testing is far better than your traditional Intel or AMD chip, but of course, compatibility can be an issue. Now, what about higher end applications? Well, I did test out uh, some video editing a little bit earlier with DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is now running natively on ARM hardware and it performs quite nicely here. So if you have a high-end application that has been optimized for these chips, it's going to run quite nicely. This is a 4K 60 frames per second project. As you can see here, it's rendering out these transitions in real time. No stuttering, it just seems to work very, very well here. These are simple edits, but this is the kind of editing you might do on one of those Intel or AMD based laptops and it does it just as well because this application was optimized for it. One thing to note though is that if you are doing video editing, you will see a hit in battery life. It'll still be better, I think, than a comparable Intel or AMD machine, but that will knock hours off of the longevity, especially if you're working on a project for a couple of hours uh, when you're out on the road. Now, gaming performance on non-gaming laptops has improved dramatically over the last couple of years, and the latest crop of Intel and AMD processors can run games like Red Dead Redemption 2 at really decent frame rates. These are pretty demanding titles, and if you're a casual gamer who just wants to boot up a game on a plane or on the road or something, you can actually do it on one of these thin and light laptops without the need for a big, heavy, power-consuming gaming device. Unfortunately, though, on these new ARM laptops, we don't have the compatibility. And I like to look at the same games from one review to the next, just so I can get a feel for how one laptop performs against the other. Now, Qualcomm's got a list of games that they say run great on this new ARM hardware, but the stuff that I usually run doesn't work all that well. Now, one improvement I saw over the last review I did of that HP laptop last week was that we were able to get No Man's Sky to boot up here. But check out my character. His arms and legs are all detached from each other. It's just totally glitched out. The performance isn't bad here, but uh, this game is just not playable. It's just too glitchy. Even my spaceship is all messed up too. So that was uh, kind of a disappointment, although an improvement, I suppose, over what we saw last time where the game didn't boot at all. Uh, like before though, Red Dead Redemption 2 gets up to its loading screen and just sits here. I was not able to get the game to run either in full screen or windowed mode. It just spins forever. So that was a total fail. And then we also checked out Doom Eternal once again. And like before, once we walk through that door, everything gets all glitched out. So this is just not a suitable gaming device. And if you were looking for a laptop to do all your work stuff and then play a game every once in a while, this is not it because of this massive compatibility issue that I don't think will improve unless developers have some reason to start targeting their games for this hardware. And I suspect that if we did see some ARM optimized games, the performance would actually be on par with competing laptops at this price point. But right now, uh, we're just not seeing it. Some of the games on the Qualcomm list probably do run okay, but I think it's going to be very much a game by game issue here and some will work and others will not. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test, we got a score of 6,187 on the extreme version of that test and 16,103 on the normal version. And that's a pretty good score, especially because this test is running in the Intel and AMD emulation mode, where it is having to do all of that translation from that code to the ARM processor. And that's pretty good, but the compatibility, as you saw, just isn't there. So there's potential here, I think, to do better, but it's going to take the game development community, Microsoft and Qualcomm to work together to make things run at their full potential here. And I just don't see enough of these units shipping to make that worthwhile for the game developers out there. Maybe over time, the engines that they use can be tuned a little better to make that transition to ARM easier, 
but right now the compatibility isn't there. And if you had 1200 bucks to spend on a laptop to do work and some casual games on, this is not one that I can recommend for that. Now, usually at this stage of our reviews, we take a look at Linux performance on these computers. And unfortunately, Linux is not yet compatible with the Snapdragon X Elite processors. Qualcomm is committed to making it work, at least that's what they've been saying. They also point to the fact that their prior generation chips did boot up ARM-based Linux distributions just fine. So I think we will see that in the near future. The good news is, is that like the HP, uh, this machine is running with a pretty standard BIOS that supports UEFI. So you could presumably at some point in the near future burn a compatible ISO to an external drive or USB stick and boot up into a different operating system and install it. Uh, but at the moment, they haven't gotten everything uh, tuned just yet with Linux to get that working on this machine. So for now, it is Windows only. So all in, I think this is a good laptop for people that are looking to do the types of work that you might do in a corporate environment. So if you spend most of your time in Office 365 apps like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and Teams, and Outlook, it's all going to be great. The web browsing experience is great here, as you saw. If you work inside a web browser with cloud apps, those should work fine. But when you get into some of the other applications, it really is hit or miss. Some things now are optimized for ARM here, like DaVinci Resolve. It's great to see that. It runs great on this machine but you might encounter other applications that you need to run day to day that have some kind of compatibility issue. And it's up to you to do the research first before you buy the laptop to know if that application is going to work or not. There are lists out there that kind of go through some popular applications, but it's hard to really inventory everything. Meanwhile, you could spend 1200 bucks on an Intel or AMD based laptop and you'll know everything you run on it will work because it is uh, compatible with that software because that's the architecture that Windows has been largely running on for decades now. So that is where we are at with these ARM PCs. This is an improvement, a very big improvement, but we're still not there on the compatibility side, although the performance is much better than before. Now you'll notice I did not make one mention about the AI features here. I did a whole video on the Copilot Plus AI stuff that these computers launched with. I do not see any of those features as a reason to buy a computer right now. You can check out that video to learn more. So proof is in the pudding here insofar as how day-to-day -day applications work, the types of things that people typically buy laptops for. I think if you are doing the basics, as I mentioned, you're going to enjoy your experience on this new ARM hardware. But beyond that, it will be hit or miss. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.